Welcome back to my pencast on chapter 9. This pencast discusses how you come up with the bad debt expense estimate adjusting entry at the end of the accounting period. There are two ways that you can come up with the bad debt expense estimate. I'm going to give you some facts and use those to demonstrate both methods. Our first method I want to look at is called the percent of sales method. Under the percent of sales method, we have the focus on the income statement. The pro is it's great matching. The con is um, it's not as good at giving you uh, net realizable value because it doesn't really consider what net realizable value the accounts receivable is going to be. It just sort of lets it happen. Let's calculate then the bad debt entry under the percent of sales method. In our example, we have sales of $100,000. Let's assume that we think our bad debt estimate is that in the end, 2% of this amount will go bad. 2% of this sales equals $2,000. In one step, we've calculated what we want bad debt expense to be. Bad debt expense would be shown at $2,000 and the allowance for doubtful accounts would be shown at $2,000. It's very good matching because we have matched the expense directly against the sales in the period covered. Let's post our journal entry into our accounts. Bad debt expense is affected. Bad debt is an expense account, so it has a zero balance, zero each period. The allowance account it's a contra asset account, so it carries a balance forward. In our example, it's a $100 credit balance. You need to watch this because the allowance account will have a small balance at the end of the period, and it could be debit or credit. Let's post our entries now. That debt expense posted for 2000 allowance posted for 2000 the balance of bad debt expense, 2000 The balance in the allowance account, 2100 So, the entry to record bad debt expense under the percentage sales method is done in one step. Sales, percent, amount, entry. I call it the one-step method, and notice it focuses only on income statement accounts. The matching is great, but we haven't really looked at the um, relationship between accounts receivable and the allowance account, so it's not as good as net realizable value calculations. Still better than not doing anything. All right, that's the uh, percent of sales method. You need to study that until you understand its nuances. Let's move on now to the percent of accounts receivable. Method. The focus of the accounts receivable method is on the balance sheet. The pro of the percent of accounts receivable method is gives you a great net realizable or cash realizable value 
and its con is it's not as good at matching because it doesn't really consider the relationship of bad debt against cells. But it's really great at net realizable value. So that's like, now then, how we calculate this amount. In our example, accounts receivable is at $20,000. I am going to come up with an estimate here. I am going to make an estimate that 10% of those sales will go bad. I do this based on history of the company and I notice that I would like the allowance account to be at $2,000. That's how many I expect to not collect. So, I need my first step to be calculate what you want the allowance account to be, and I have done that. There is a second step I need to do now, and the second step is to consider where the allowance is, which is, for the information I've given you, $100 credit balance. I would like it to be at 2000 so the second step is to calculate what I need to make that happen. In this case, if you have a credit of 100 and you want a credit of 2000 you need to make an entry for $1,900. You then come up with the amount that you want the entry to be. It took two steps. First you figure out what you want the allowance account to be, which was 2000 then you check on where you are and make an entry for the difference. Our entry under this method would be to say bad debt expense 1900 and allowance for doubtful accounts 1900 When you post these entries, let's see what happens. You have bad debt expense and an income statement account starting with a zero balance, an allowance for doubtful accounts, contra asset starting with whatever balance it is. You post your journal entry, 1900, 1900. Total the accounts, bad debt expense is 1900, and the allowance account is 2000. So the entry that you made after doing the two steps of calculating what you want and how to get there makes that happen. It's a two-step method. I want you to notice something interesting. It's a mistake students often make. Under the percent of sales method, the allowance for doubtful accounts credit is 2000 that is posted into the account, allowance for doubtful accounts, and it leaves the balance of 2100 The allowance account has a beginning balance. It's a balance sheet account. Therefore, the entry you make into it will never be the balance of the account. It will just be an entry into it. If you want to know the balance, make a T account and post it. Under the accounts receivable method, it's the same thing. You went through your two steps of calculating the entry. You made an entry to the allowance for doubtful accounts that got the account to be what you wanted it to be. But the entry into the allowance account is never the balance of the allowance account. It's a balance sheet account that has a beginning balance. If you want to know what the balance in it is, I suggest you make a T account, enter the beginning balance, post activity, and come up with the ending balance. This is a point where students frequently miss points on tests, homework, and finals because they want the allowance account to be the balance. They want the allowance account entry to be the balance in the allowance account. 
But if you think about it, when you have a balance sheet account, there always is a beginning balance. You make entries, and then there's an ending balance. So there isn't a relationship of the entry amount into the allowance account and the balance in that account matching up. That is a review of the allowance method of accounting for doubtful accounts. And specifically, we focus on how you come up with the bad debt expense at the end of the period. So we've now learned how to write off an account, and we've now learned how to come up with the bad debt expense at the end of the period. Please review this pincast more than once. This is a tricky subject. There's one more piece to it, but this is long enough. And the piece comes in in what happens if the allowance account has a debit balance. Let's do that on a separate pincast.